Welcome to Grow Law Firm Podcast. This is your host, Sasha Burson, and I have an amazing marketer, Maddie Martin. How do I know that she's amazing? I listened and watched a bunch of her podcasts where she was the guest, where she talked about her story, how she got into marketing. And for our listeners, would you mind sharing your story? Sure. Thanks so much for having me, Sasha. Um, so I'm Maddie Martin. I'm currently the Senior Vice President of Growth over Marketing Sales and Partnerships at Smith AI, which is a customer engagement platform for small businesses. And how I got started, uh, well, way back when I was involved in the um, uh, campaigns for my college and I would cold call alumni and ask them for money. And uh, that got me, um, you know, pretty savvy with uh, sales and the tactics of influence and uh, getting what you need to get for an, an organization. Uh, I moved into nonprofits out of college and uh, I was I was really focused on how I could use my ability to communicate in ways that benefited others. So I focused that initially on nonprofits. I was working for a group in DC. Um, called the National Association for Community Services Programs. And basically there's a block grant that's distributed to the uh, organizations across the United States. You might've heard of the United Way. That's one of those organizations. And I was, as an econ major, um, putting together reports on how those funds were spent and what impact it had. And after a period of time, um, little known fact, I also went to culinary school after college. So. I had an opportunity to start doing some recipe testing for a little known startup at the time uh, in my off hours called Food 52, which is now a household name for any home cook who loves to uh, you know, enjoy recipes and cook with the best uh, you know, utensils and elements. Um, but I started recipe testing and from there, it turned into a part-time job and then it turned into a full-time job and I realized very quickly that that was the area that I was most passionate about. And it was also an area where I found really most fulfilling because I wasn't just writing a report on what other people were doing, although that was really important work. I was directly involved in um, getting people back in touch with you know, their roots and cooking and providing for their families and doing good in a different realm, right? Um, so that mission was really important to me, uh, bringing value to people, circulating those recipes and making sure that people felt recognized for um, an area that felt like they were contributing in a particular special way to their families and their communities with their with their food. Um, so I took a full time role there. And after being an editor for a while, we had a partnership with Whole Foods Market um, that was bringing cooking into their stores. And that was really where I cut my teeth on partnerships and business development. And from there, I also was running content syndication where we were working with uh, Yahoo Food and Huffington Post and Lifehacker and all those different companies that um, would bring you really fun content at the age when food bloggers were the coolest people in town, right? I mean, that was just the fastest growing market. Um, and the industry was actually also breaking down the barriers. It wasn't gourmet and bon appetit were telling you what to eat and feed your family. It was the food bloggers. So it was a time when we felt there's this really democratic shift. And, uh, and that actually led to me feeling passionately about that area. When I later went on to Your Mechanic, um, the democratic shift that we saw with the Uberization of everything. So Your Mechanic was the uh, tech crunch disrupt winner uh, several years back. Um, they got a lot of traction bringing mechanics to people at their home or office. Mm -hmm. I led marketing for them and, uh, and some of their partnerships, including uh, one with some ride sharing companies where we were bringing the mechanics to uh, big events to get ride share drivers on the road because there was such a demand um, for those drivers and not enough supply on the roads actually. So they were trying as hard as they possibly could to get drivers. Um, alongside that project, I also led a huge content team to produce um, meaningful, accessible how-to content for car owners so that they could feel empowered to make the decisions uh, when they would go to the mechanic or if they chose our service, you know, what to expect uh, when a mechanic comes to you and how to have a conversation with them, which is an area of uh, 
um, lack of knowledge uh, for a lot mm -hmm. of car owners out there. So after being there for several years, um, I was connected with Aaron and Justin, who are the founders of Smith AI. And I felt like, wow, here's another really motivated, uh, successful company already that had clear product market fit and they needed someone to lead their marketing team. So over the last five years, I have uh, led marketing that includes a lot of digital marketing, both paid and organic events, um, all affiliate marketing, which turned into a, a pretty thriving partnerships program now, and most recently uh, taking on the sales team. So we are uh, in a very good place right now, um, finding a ton of demand for our services, especially after uh, COVID. Um, Everyone is looking for more flexible work arrangements and a more affordable, scalable business model and virtual receptionists and uh, other cu customer engagement tools like outreach campaigns and website chat really allow the business owners to like, you know, law firm owners or other professional services. It really allows them to focus on what they need to do during the day and outsource everything else that can be done on their behalf. Yeah. And this is the reason why I was so excited to bring you on the podcast. Let, let me explain in my own words how I understand what Smith AI, AI is. Smith AI for a law firm or any professional service company is like this assistant on steroids who can do so much at a fraction of the cost. Like I looked at it and I'm like, this is such a huge money maker. Let me explain. In one of the podcasts that I listened to you speak, I think this was about a year ago, you mentioned that on average, and you were like, there was a disclaimer, you're like, I'm not sure if the prices are gonna be the same when you listen to this. At the time you said it's like between 500 and $700 a month. And it covers so much. This is not just an answering service. This is like your assistant who will answer every possible channel, do some pre-qualification conversation, whether it's one question or three or four questions to make sure that this could be a good fit and then connect you or set a meeting for you, Mr. or Mrs. Attorney, so that you're actually talking to a reasonable prospect rather than another BS call. Five to 700 bucks at the time, this is about 12, 14 months ago. And I'm like, we have so many clients who despite our best efforts to have them implement some sort of an answering service, still do not have an answering service. And I always talk to them about numbers because Grow Law Firm is all about numbers, right? We're in the business of helping law firms make a lot more money than they do. And those who do not implement an answering service, I tell them, look, here are the stats. There was a study numerous years ago, which said that the first attorney who answers a call or replies to an inquiry from a prospective client has a 71% probability of getting that business. A lot of attorneys pride themselves that they get back to their prospects the next day. And I'm like, if you get back to them the next day and two of your competitors got to speak to them or their assistants got to speak to them that very same day, your probability of getting that business is incredibly close to zero. And the efforts that you're paying us for, which is bringing in those prospective clients, are being wasted. So here's how I look at it. Let's say your close rate, you're an attorney, your close rate is one out of four, 25%. You miss 10 calls and you respond to them the following day. Your close rate on those 10 missed calls is gonna be very close to zero. The average case value, $5,000. You just missed out on $12,500 in revenue. It's that simple. On the surface for many small and like solo law firms, it's like, but I'm saving five, 700 bucks a month. And I'm like, no, that saving costs you 12 grand every month. That's $144,000 a year that you're not saving, but that goes to somebody else, your competitors. So now that I kind of summarized what Smith AI does, would you please go into more detail and explain to our listeners like what it actually does? Because I just gave them like, like this, like much yeah. summary. Definitely. Yeah. You're also 100% correct about the statistic and just knowing how impactful that is. I think it's easy to also dismiss that if you get a lot of referrals or if you have a strong word of mouth business or your reviews are outstanding. People think, oh, the lead is going to wait for me because they're a referral. Well, the statistics show that people get more than one referral these days. So if they say on, a, on Facebook, 
can anyone recommend an attorney to me for my divorce? They're going to get a lot of responses. So you're not the only referral that they're getting, right? So we have to think about what's the new world order and referrals are not what they once were, which is just a one-to-one -one handshake and here you go, business is done. So what Smith AI is here to do exactly, Sasha, you got it right. It is to make sure that you keep the funnel, your funnel and not funneling to other people right? Because that can easily take a dog leg left and go to the other people who did not pay for that lead, did not spend all the time building up their SEO. They just are waiting for you to mess up by not answering, right? So we need to close that gap and we need to make sure that everyone who finds your business is helped. They are triaged. So either they are qualified as a good potential client by our agents, or they are identified as someone who should be referred out to a firm you recommend, or to the uh, you know bar association, or just declined and very clearly done so. And you can have an email follow up if that's your rules to uh, in your in your state to say we're not going to be working with you. Um, but for those who are qualified, we can schedule an appointment, we can take a payment for a consultation, and we can um, make sure that that is in your CRM, in your practice management system, on your calendar, and in your bank account, right? So when we're able to accomplish all of that on a call, and all you have to do is show up for that meeting that was scheduled for you and review the notes that you have on hand. And sometimes those notes are in the form of a chat transcript or a text transcript, right? It could go back and forth in Facebook Messenger we can handle for you. But the most important thing is that you didn't have to do that vetting yourself and that you don't miss those opportunities because you're not able to answer. I mean, the, the data shows that there's two hours spent on admin work on average a day. There's two hours spent on business development work. There's, you know, maybe six hours spent on on lawyering work if at the most you know you're you're able to commit that time but there is a lot of work consumed by running the business of a law firm and 90 plus percent of people say that law school didn't prepare them to run the business side of a law firm right so it's not your fault that you feel ill-equipped or um you know sort of stumbling around here in the dark of what it means to run a law firm that's why we're here to say you shouldn't have to take this on. And frankly, your time is best spent other in other areas. And you know what those areas are. But there is a comfort zone here, Sasha, that we also have to address, which is one of the reasons if you're in a small, you know, small, medium law firm and you were instrumental in growing that firm, you know that part of the reason why it's successful is on your shoulders. You help to build that. And there becomes a point, there's a point where there's an inflection point and you realize I actually need to delegate in order to get to the next level. And that's why you hire an excellent agency. That's why you delegate to legal, um, you know, virtual paralegals and other services like that, as well as to solutions like Smith AI that can handle that frontline communication for you. Well, you go do the things that will build the next level law firm, right? Yeah. Hiring those people who are going to be the next um, attorneys at your firm and, and doing the work required to, to produce legal work for your clients. Yeah, that's why I was so excited about bringing you on because whether whoever you are who is listening to this, whether you're solo or you have 10 attorneys working with you or for you, Smith AI is a huge, huge, huge money maker. Everything okay. that you said, I agree with except for one thing. Okay. It is their fault. Like if your business is struggling, you you got to own it. Like it is your fault. And, and let me explain why. 25 years ago, I would say it's not your fault. It's the law school's fault. Because when we think about like lawyer success, none of them can claim that they're the best in the field because that goes against their ethics rules, right? They can get disbarred. Right. But so because of that, like the way attorneys really measure their success is in terms of financial rewards. 25 years ago, there was very little information and very few channels for you to make it big as a lawyer. Today, there is overabundance of information that will show you how to not be a great lawyer, but how to be a great rainmaker who brings in the business, or better yet, how to be a great CEO of your law firm. Because like your income level scales up 
with different positions. If you're a lawyer, like I looked at stats, like you cannot make more than four hundred, four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. And while it's nothing to snuff at, like a rainmaker can make four, five, six times that, and an effective CEO of a law firm can make a multiple of that. So it's just it's kind of like at your fingertips. You can learn, you can get that business acumen, and you can grow a great law firm if you choose to. But I also find that most lawyers are very comfortable lawyering around. And that's okay too. Like you shouldn't push yourself into something that you you may not be a confident business executive, and that's okay, right? But like you listen to people like Maddie here, myself, and many other people who've been on this podcast, like everyone I bring on the podcast, one of my goals is to make sure that whatever solutions they offer will help our listeners make a lot more money and at the end of the day cost them absolutely nothing. And when I think about Smith AI, when I first came across it, I was like, holy shit. This is one of those like you put money in and you take out like 20 times more just because you have it. And all you have to do is just make a decision to have it. And what I really like about Smith AI, unlike a traditional answering service, you actually cover every channel of communication. My understanding is that, yes, you will answer phones. Yes, you will reply to requests to contact us form in every law firm that has a website. And all of them do. I hope you do. Right. Has a contact us form. You can cover Facebook Messenger, which more and more people will reach out to your law firm using Facebook Messenger and just about any other conceivable communication channel Like people love to communicate via text message right now. You may think that's ludicrous. Nobody is going to text my law firm and you're wrong. Yeah. And you better check also if you think you're not getting text messages. Just one quick aside, I'll let you take a drink. Um, it's really important that I say this in every CLE I teach. If you don't know if your business phone number accepts text messages, you should look into that because you might be missing text messages and yep. you probably are because most people, I mean, think about it, Sasha, if you are in family law or immigration or an area where there is sensitive information or personal injury, imagine that you're actually right after an accident, you are probably too shaky to make a phone call, but you can text someone and any number that responds to you, you're going to have an immediate grateful, relieved response. And actually the Clio Legal Trends Report showed really interesting data on how attorneys on average don't recognize that emotional response that a potential client has as significant as the potential client feels it. So yeah. that sense of relief and sense of urgency is something that the client feels very strongly, but that the attorney does not sense is felt as strongly. So, so think about that, try and feel that more strongly and use that to guide your behavior. For sure. There's, a, I think, a really important side point, and that is I can picture some of the folks who are listening to us right now or watching us. They may be like, but I don't like texting. Like, I really just don't like texting. And the reason why I thought about that is because I don't like texting. I just don't. So some of you may be thinking, like, who would text us? Like, that's just such a stupid idea to text us, especially text the number that's on our website. But the truth of the matter is it doesn't matter how I feel about texting. And it doesn't matter how you feel about texting. It matters how people who can write you a check feel about texting. And if they want to text you, you better be there to answer the text. And I know you attorneys probably do not want to answer the text. That's why I give you Smith AI. Well, <laughs> because they'll do it for you. Yes, exactly. I mean, we will do it for you. And I will also say that it is not something that we see as a big generational divide. Like it would be very easy. And I've heard it before that you can dismiss a lot of things. You can dismiss a voicemail and say that that's your screening mechanism for clients who are willing to wait for you. I've heard that too. You can dismiss a text message as that's not your ideal client who's not willing to call you. But what about the person who's in a relationship where that person is screening all their calls? and they can silently text out a message or use website chat to discreetly have a conversation at work about something that is material to them. You know, we have to think that if you open up the channel, then your mind opens up to the opportunity. Just think like, what assumptions are we putting out there that are preventing growth? And what risk is there that we assume if we open ourselves up to that opportunity. So if you add website chat, if you add text answering, if you open yourself up and you say, even on your website, text us, if you have the chat widget pop up and say, 
how can we help you? You'll get responses that are valuable in a couple different ways. One, yes, you'll get more leads. It is shown that on chat, you're going to get one net new lead for every four calls, which means that people are not going to all call you if you don't make you know chat or texting an option. They're actually not going to call you. The other thing is, and Sasha, you know this better than anyone, you're going to get their written words and queries that they probably typed into Google that Google's not going to tell you. So you get the exact thing that they're searching for in their own words. For example, if your website says car wreck all over the place and all the chats people are asking about car crashes, well, you should probably use the term car crash instead of car wreck because that's what your base is talking about, right? So it's very valuable, not just directly, but also indirectly. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You brought up a really interesting point about how some attorneys, and, and I'm speaking about attorneys here because I think, and I, I know so many attorneys, awesome people, really smart people, some egos are larger than your like average human so some may think and this has nothing to do with smith ai or grow law firm or any other provider something that what one of the tests whether the client really wants to work with you or not will they wait for you to call them back right like that thinking can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year i was at a law firm conference a couple of months ago there was a guy whose law firm pi firm Spent $37 million on advertising and marketing last year. He has 450 employees. And we talked about like, what is their intake process? How do they reach out to people who reach out to them or reach back to people who reach out to them? And he says, we have 13 different ways of following up with our leads. Third, let me repeat that. 13 different ways to reach back to our leads. They're following up 13 different ways. Wow. That law firm does over $200 million in revenue. Right. right. Their egos are non existent. It's a business. Exactly. Ego, you're, you're costing yourself over the course of your career. If ego is in play, you're costing yourself three vacation homes, 12 Ferraris, and a couple of yachts. A legacy for your children and imprint. For on sure. your community. I mean, permanence of your brand and name. I mean, there is a legacy that you are building there and it goes way beyond the tangible things to the intangible too, Sasha. You know, like there is something really important about what you just said, which is not just like the amount of touch points, but also I think follow up. So one of the things that we often hear is hey, we're doing what you told us, we're answering every call, and then we're having a meeting, and well, what happens after the meeting? What's your follow-up strategy? Oh, uh, we throw them in an email drip, and then, you know, maybe they'll, they'll you know, come back around, or they'll talk to their spouse, or their business partner, or whoever, and, and, and hire us, right? Um, well, have you tried calling them? No, we don't have time for that. You know, like the email drip works. We occasionally get a client coming back in and we've got enough volume coming through. Let me tell you, there's there's no such thing as enough volume coming through because as you get more volume and as you better utilize the leads that you already have invested in, and that's quite a bit. I mean, by the time you have brought them in, you've spent money. Then you have a consultation and you spent your time there's time in setting up that sequence to go to them. There is time in checking in and all of that has already been a sunk cost. So what is the incremental cost then to have someone like Smith AI make an outbound call or a sequence of outbound calls to just see what the opportunity is there to be had that you're not following up on? Because obviously you have bigger fish to fry, which is fine, but someone has to do it. Not, it can't be nobody because that, opportunity that's sitting there waiting for you to chase them is real and that means that you actually have more predictable and lower marketing costs at the very top of the funnel because you can get more out of it you can squeeze more juice out of that orange you're basically cutting the orange in half squeezing a little like you know thimble full of juice and saying like ah you know maybe someone will get around and they'll see it on the counter and they'll squeeze that juice for me like that's not going to happen right 
So not a huge diss on email drips, but we know that the conversions come from the phone calls, don't we? So uh, that is the most important thing. You don't just have to answer. You have to also follow through and chase. And that has to be done by phone. Now you can call and you can email and text and they can get the picture that you really want to work with them and that you're the type of firm. What, what does it say about your brand? It says you're the type of firm that takes them seriously, that wants their business. Even if they didn't go with you and you're late to the game and you only start doing this now with your old leads, there's probably people who they know and you're going to be top of mind as a brand for them to recommend or refer, even if it didn't work with you because you're in front of them. Right. And that's professional. It's there's a there's a misconception that that sort of chase is unprofessional, that it's beneath you. That's yeah, but, but the guy who does they excuse themselves. Right. Like that's the not does winners. $250 million dollars in revenue says otherwise. Exactly. Because we follow up 13 different ways. That that's an indication that an assumption is going to make sure that you are right uh, in your assumption, but actually overall you're wrong, right? So you're you're very right in the assumption that if I don't do anything because I don't think it's going to work, nothing's going to happen. Hundred percent agree with you. If you don't do anything, nothing is going to happen. But if you try, you can at least see if it's valuable and what your meter is there for what valuable means you know oh you only got a couple well is your approach to totally throw it out or is it to try a different cadence try different language try different timing so yeah. to me that just opens up a whole new world of opportunity by the way what's a couple like if you got a couple of extra cases out of that and your average case value is five grand well that's ten thousand dollars but truth of the matter is i fully believe that overwhelming majority of small law firms do not have any follow-up, like any, right? Or they may they have like, follow-up, right? Or, or it might be like an email a week later saying like, hey, what'd you decide? Yeah. Or a can template that we have yeah. started to call, you know, account-based marketing. Like, I mean, that's yeah. not that's not really going to move the needle. And you're probably not investing on the phone call side because you think that email is going to give you the indication that there's something to be had there. And if email works, then you'll do phone calls. But that's not yeah. the way that it works because if you look at 95% of the time the conversion comes from the phone call and you're only looking at the 5% on a very small number, then you're not looking at really what the opportunity value is. Right, and, and I assume that for most, even small law firms, the opportunity cost of not getting the business that they could be getting is on annual basis, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Absolutely. Not, not like five, 10 grand. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of business, like walking into your office and then just walking out because you didn't connect or you didn't I follow up. By the way, when you talk about follow up, does Smith AI also do follow up? So we do, we will do follow up uh, in a number of ways. So you mentioned web forms, for example, let's say you have a really high intent uh, marketing channel and they come to your website and they fill out a form or they have a landing page and they fill out the form. We actually have open APIs at Smith AI that allow that form to post an immediate callback by a receptionist to that person and to say, you know, thank you so much for contacting ABC law firm about your slip and fall. Um, we would love to connect you with an attorney. Can I ask you a few questions? You know, where and when did it happen? Blah, blah, blah. So that would be the first connection. Then let's say that I do or don't book an appointment, but I've qualified that lead as the receptionist and they would go into potentially a queue and your they would be tagged in a certain way in your practice management system or your you know marketing automation. And they could also be set up in a way with Smith AI to call them back, right? So you can actually say at that first call, um, whether you connect with them, you make one outbound call, then also you want to make sure that we make future calls until we get them booked. Let's say you make five calls. You can set up the cadence. You can say call every uh, day or two days. You could say, I only want you to call in these hours because you know that's within reason for what I want my business to look like in front of these new leads. Um, you know, I'm not going to be calling them at 10 o'clock at night. That's not appropriate for my firm. Fine. Estate lawyers, for example, you're going to want to be very careful about, you know, the boundaries that you play in versus personal injury. They probably want you to call them back at three in the morning when they send out that yep. form or text, 100%. right? 
So, so that's totally possible and it's very flexible. And we, we recommend uh, repeated follow-up because we know that it takes several attempts to get in contact with that lead. Yeah. What happens if an attorney had the meeting, initial meeting, but there is no engagement yet? Would you follow up with them as well? If your yeah. system gets triggered from their practice management software saying that this is still an open Yes, Prospect. absolutely. We can follow up with them on a one-time basis. So it could be every time there's one of those. If you have a reception mm -hmm. plan, then we can make that outbound call for you. Um, and we can also do outreach campaigns to a dedicated set. So imagine that you are uh, in a state or personal injury or family law and you did a presentation and you have a bunch of people who came to your presentation and now you have their emails and their phone numbers, whatever. We can make a call as a campaign to all of those people and then to every person treat them exactly the same way there's going to be six calls they're going to follow up we're also going to send them an sms email after the call to say here's a youtube video about our you know founding attorney talking about you know uh with one of our clients a testimonial whatever That's it awesome. is um you can also use SMS and email follow-up in some other interesting ways. So sometimes we find that there are firms that are paying someone to have a very, very long intake call. You have an intake specialist. And maybe it makes sense to actually have Smith AI have a few questions, qualify that lead. And then after that phone call, in advance of the consultation scheduled with the attorney, where the intake specialist would potentially step in and have another time-consuming call, send them the link to the intake form via SMS or email right after our call, they can fill that out. And that's a commitment that they make before they show up to the consultation. That's nice for people who are working remotely, got their hands full. They don't necessarily have time for another one hour call. They work full time. They can do that on their own time. And it also will show the law firms that feel like they need that commitment from someone, especially if you're not charging. Okay, we're not gonna charge, but we're gonna ask you to fill out this form so that we're informed and can have a productive consultation. So when I was saying that this is like a personal assistant on steroids, I didn't even realize just how many steroids your personal assistants take. <laughs> this totally is legal to work with Smith AI. So, um, so I understand that your pricing model is such that it's based on like the number of productive calls. So you do not charge a flat fee. You do not charge for fielding those calls that are about nothing. Somebody calling you trying to sell you something. Right. It's it's just about productive calls. Yes. So the way that it works, uh, we charge for relevant calls, chats, texts, any wrong number. Uh, we have a very funny story about someone who does a MacBook repair and he was getting a lot of calls about when the new iPhone is coming out. That would be a wrong number. He's not the Apple store. He's an independent person, right? right? Um, so you can, you know, proxy that for your own uh, use case. Um, no spam or sales calls. So we know that there are a lot of people who are going to be contacting you, especially as a as a business that's getting more of a web presence. They're going to start, you know, coming out of the woodwork. We want to block those for free. And let me tell you, that's like 20 to 30 percent of the calls that come in for some of our businesses. And that is a huge time suck. So we actually have technology that prevents our agents from even answering the known robocallers. So we're not passing that cost on to you time that they're spending. We're eliminating it from our business altogether. Um, and then when they do come in, sometimes they're sneaky, uh, then we can block them for you. We also have the ability for some callers who may call you frequently, or if your fa family and friends are calling in, you could have a direct transfer list so that can skip over the agents and save you money so that it's spent on those leads and existing clients who call. My mind is just absolutely blown. I usually, toward the end of these episodes, it, ask my guests one question, but here I don't even need to ask it, but the question is usually like this. So imagine that you and I partner up and we buy a law firm. What do we do really fast in order to start making more money? Here, I have the answer. We hire Smith AI, and by the way, I do not have equity in this company. I'm not an employee of this company. Maddie is not paying me anything to say these things, but like I'm not a customer. But after listening to what you just said, I'm like, I should be a customer and I should have been a customer for the last five years since I bought into this company, but I haven't. I don't know if Smith has been around for that long, but we definitely, you need to set me up with somebody on your sales team so we can talk about this because I know we have a lot of people in the office and we all answer phones, but we're just, not as good as what you're talking about. And I think it's going to ultimately help us make 
a lot more money. How do people connect with you or someone on your sales team to talk about how to implement this in their law firm? We would love to have a consultation with anyone who's interested or who just wants to, you know, talk and strategize together. Um, we we are reachable in a number of ways. So smith.ai is our website. Um, Smith, like the last name, right? Smith, mm -hmm, S-M-I-T-H dot A-I. Um, and we also have a chat that's on there and you can get a booking just through chat if you want to see what chat is like uh, with our product. You can also email us at sales at smith.ai or on the website, there's an easy link to book a consultation for free. And you'll have 30 minutes with our wonderful team who will go through the solution that's right for you. Do you have any great case studies on the site specifically for law firms? We have a lot of great case studies and I'll also recommend that you check out our YouTube channel where we have case studies with uh, a number of different uh, individuals we've worked with for a long time um, and several attorneys. It's, it's really interesting to think that you can fit Smith AI into your law firm in any way that you're comfortable with. And I will tell you, if it's not throw everything at us at the beginning, that's totally fine. You might start out with overflow and after hours calls realizing that that could be as many as 25 percent of your your total call volume um it is very valuable to make sure that you're covered in those hours and when people are at yeah. the office or have a lunch break so my strongest recommendation to our listeners viewers don't procrastinate if you do not have an amazing amazing assistant i'm not even talking about the answering service but an amazing assistant just like go to their website right now and set a call. Like six months, 12 months, three months from now, you'll be like, holy shit, how did they do it for all these years without this? It's exactly what they say. Right, because like a life can be very difficult. A quick case study years ago when I was running a consulting firm, we did a study for one of our clients and they were concerned about their sales numbers and we were trying to figure out where the breakdown was and we looked at what the front desk was doing there was a full-time receptionist who's been them with them for years and what we learned was that the payroll cost of having that reception this is about a decade ago was about forty thousand plus benefits so let's call it fifty thousand the amount of business that she missed was over a million on annual basis so when we went to the owner of that firm we're like look the direct cost is fifty thousand the total cost is one million fifty thousand, give or take. And he like he nearly threw up when they, we showed him the data. So, if you do not have a great, great, phenomenal, and I don't think like anyone can do it on their own. Everything that you guys do, because there are just too many moving parts. You think about every channel, right, through which you are taken in inbound content. Twenty four seven and every holiday. I'm not yeah. even concerned about twenty four seven, right? Imagine that it's. My business only takes in calls between the hours of eight and six. Sure. Fine, right? There's 10 hours. I have receptionist who does it all. Does your receptionist answer every Facebook message? Because you might be getting Facebook messages if you would be there. Every chat on the website, because you would be taking those messages through the chat. Every text message, every conceivable avenue through which messages come inbound. Does your assistant, receptionist, paralegal, whoever's doing this for you, do they know what questions to ask? how to follow up after that initial communication or after the communication that you have with them. If they're not doing all of that, it's costing you money and getting Smith AI. And that's what I love about this platform and many others who are on this pod, come on this podcast is that at the end of the day, I think at the end of the first month or two, you will see how Smith AI is not just free, but a huge money maker for you. So that's the, that's, the bottom line end of story right there don't think about it because people like to think about it before they get to it like don't waste another day week month quarter a year thinking about it just contact by the way is there an annual commitment or can they try it see if it no. works for them or not the There's no annual commitment. money back guarantee yep so, cool so money back guarantee you sign up you try it you love it you stick with it you hate it you say sasha you screwed up had the wrong person there right which i'll accept the blame right but to me it sounds incredible and they will set up a call with one of your reps to get this going for my offices maddie what a pleasure it was having you here 
Thank you, Sasha. This is a wonderful time. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for everyone who's listening. Thank you.